All right, we're gonna start getting the garage cleaned up and get ready for the car from Japan to make space. I've got the garage all cleared up, shelves reorganized, put everything else under the house that I could to make as much space as possible. Got all my parts somewhat organized that need to go back into the car. Got some tires up here, stacked my other wheels all over there. Old interiors up top, new interior sitting here. Uh, basically the only thing I'll have to move out is these two garbage cans my daughter's bikes and her power wheels. Otherwise, I've got from the front of the garage, these back tires, I've got 13 feet. Once I get those mounted on the car to the engine hoist, I've got 13 and a half feet. So I should easily be able to fit both cars there. It's gonna be a little tight, but at least this part's done. All right, this part wasn't that exciting, but let's talk about which car I'm gonna import. Let's go inside. All right, good morning, guys. Let's. Uh take a look at some cars and what I was looking at. So if you are an import fan and you want to get some Japanese cars, if you live in the States, there's probably a local dealership that you can find that's going to have inventory of what you can buy. So if you look at some of these cars, like they want 29,000 for an R32 GTR, which you can import it yourself for $10,000 less. The same thing here, like a Toyota Aristo, 16,500 bucks. Toyota Sorer, $17,000. You can import these yourself for like 6,000 bucks less. So if you do a Google search, you can find most of these companies that I found online, like Garage Defend, I found them on YouTube. And originally I was thinking I wanted to get an R33. And uh, I almost bought an R33 before I bought my R32. I was looking at a Midnight Purple one for like $13,000 US three years ago so you can see how the price is like tripled it's unaffordable I can't afford this without selling my car and I don't want to sell my car yet uh, the only thing I would consider selling my GTR4 would be an R34 and uh, those are still kind of expensive uh, the other vehicle I was considering was a Supra which I could afford to do this but the cool thing with the, the thing with the Supra is it's already been in the states for years is originally imported here i mean it's a fast and furious car it's cool it has a legendary 2jz pretty lightweight everybody loves supras everybody loves the 2jz this one isn't that bad of a price twenty one thousand bucks uh, originally was an automatic uh, they converted it to a six speed they used a transmission out of a alteza So I decided not to do a Supra. Uh, the other thing I was considering was potentially an RX-7. Um, the prices have really jumped up on these. They used to be like, uh, before they were USA import legal, they were like $7,000. And they basically doubled the triple in price as well. So I didn't want to spend $25,000 to import an RX-7. Plus with the, the rotary engine, I've never dealt with any type of rotary motors. It would just be too much of a, a learning process for me and I did not did not want to deal with a headache with an engine rebuild or anything like that so I decided that wasn't really a safe bet for me not a good investment for my money uh, I'm a big Subaru fan I uh, fell in love with like the WX and like the Lancer evolutions back in the days of PlayStation 1 and playing the first Gran Turismo game um, I wanted to buy an Evo back then but there was no Lancer evolutions for sale in the states the only thing you could buy was the uh, Mitsubishi Mirage which was pretty sad uh, but I ended up buying a 2.5 RS brand new, which was the GC8 platform. Basically like a Subaru Type R, very similar to this white one here. Um, but I mean, this is just the WX, not the STI, but unless it's the Type R, I don't really think it looks all that cool and they want a ton of money for the Type Rs. And the thing I worry about the EJ engines is their uh, reliability with like the head gasket and stuff like that and building safe, reliable power. So I kind of decided not to do uh, Subaru product. Uh, then I considered an Evo, so I really like the Evo. Like uh, this is another website that has quite a few of them for sale, and the prices are going to really jump up on these. Like right now, they're only 
$7,700 with shipping to the U.S., but this is year 1996, so it won't be eligible for import until a year from now, but, I mean, I could buy it, buy it now and store it somewhere and ship it, and I could probably double my investment for what it would be worth. It would probably be worth ten grand more a year from now than it is now on the website, but this thing is beautiful. Nice Advan wheels, beautiful blue. Got the intake vent. It's not as cool as the Evo 5, but you can't get the Evo 5, I don't think, until 1999. So that'd be like 2024. And by that time, hopefully, I'm working on getting my R34. But yeah, this is a really nice car. I considered buying this and sitting on it, but I don't want to tie up all that money with something I can't enjoy. So then the other car I thought of was the Silvia. Uh, you know, watching Tokyo Drift, kind of falling in love with the Silvia and uh, doing some drifting, which I've never done, but I'm kind of interested in it. And then watching like Salmon on YouTube with his S15 and uh, all those guys at, uh, what's, what's that shop he works at? Yoshio Factory. Uh, those guys have some pretty cool Silvias and lots of, looks like they have a lot of fun with them. The thing I liked about the Silvia is it's lightweight. And so... It's going to be, I think, a little bit more fun car to drive, so it's like 2,700 pounds, four or 500 pounds lighter than most of the other cars. And the other car I was considering was a Toyota Soar. So this is a cool car, 2J, or not 2J, but the 1JZ, 2.5 liter twin turbo, developed by Yamaha. Very similar, basically first generation 2JZ. Thought this would be kind of a cool platform to work with, considering the price is so inexpensive for $6,000 shipped to the port. Interior, I don't really care for this ugly cream color. If you can go like year, I think 1994, 1995, they start making them with a black interior. But they're really hard to find in a manual. Um, most of them are automatic. The manual ones, they're basically twice the price, so then you're spending like 10000 bucks. And these are really heavy. This this car is uh, around 3,700 pounds with all the sound deadening and everything. It's a luxury car, so 1,000 pounds heavier than like a Silvia. And the other car I considered was like a Toyota Aristo. And they're not, they're not too expensive. Like the, the V300 is the twin turbo 2JZ non-VVTI, um, but not too bad of a deal for 8800 bucks plus shipping and stuff, so a little more than ten grand. So you can import it yourself for like 5000 less than what the dealers are selling them for here, but I just think the interior is kind of outdated. This car really isn't all that cool looking. I like the 2JZ, so I don't like this body style. If I was going to go for an Aristo, I'd be waiting for the year 1997, so like the V300. You can see here, like the prices are really still far down because they're not USA import legal. So the, I think the best way to get a deal is to buy something about six months to a year before it's eligible to import into the States. And uh, that's what I ended up doing on the car that I bought. So I ordered it back in October, so four months ago, and it wasn't uh, US a legal until right now so I bought it like four months before it's eligible for shipping but like this Aristo I think is pretty cool it'd be a big boat big family car but this has a little bit more style to it than the older generation all right so the other vehicle I was considering was a Mitsubishi GTO uh, I owned one of these before and I really liked it and the prices in Japan are uh, pretty good for them you can get one for like four to six thousand dollars depending on the mileage and the condition but I really considered buying this car, and this thing was only like $7,000 shipped to the Port of Tacoma, so it wasn't bad. Had some cool Advan SAR3, but interior looked really good. So I was almost stuck on this car, but I've already owned one, and they're heavy. They're like 3,700 pounds. It's as heavy as like a modern GTR. So I decided against this. So that's kind of what led me to the final conclusion of what I really like is the uh, Nissan Silvia. Even though the 240 SXs were sold in the U.S., we never had the turbo version, and the price is good for, and the price is good for what you're looking at. But there is a limited inventory selection, 
uh, especially for a year 1995 there's not a lot of them for sale so like if you go to garage defend everything they're selling is s15s they don't have any s14s for sale um, look at all the websites it's got to be a k version if it's a q it's a non-turbo non-turbo and the prices on these are pretty expensive so like this one seventy one hundred dollars for a non-turbo right-hand drive Sylvia it's the kooky so it's got the cool headlights so it looks cool versus this is the Zenki so I decided to go ahead and go to auction so I uh, went ahead and looked in auction in Pacific Coast and this will kind of show you Depending on how you set up, it'll show you everything that's been sold in the auction in the last 90 days. So you can look at all these Sylvia's. Anything that's a Sylvia S14 K's turbo. This one was sold for 6700 bucks, And it's rebuilt. Sold for 746,000 yen. So this thing is pretty beat up. I want to be interested in this. Mileage is pretty high, 163,000. Looks pretty clean though. Some CE28s up front. Year 1995. So you kind of look at the auction and kind of decide what you think it's going to sell for. So with the car that I bought, I bought a year 1995 at the end of uh last year so i bought it four months before it was usa uh import eligible which i think saved me about three thousand dollars uh from the time of the auction and so this is the actual car that i bought so it's a 1995 sylvia s14 case so it's turbo has some like nice side skirts on it wheels So these are the auction photos that I had to look at, and then this is the auction sheet itself. So it has 107,000 kilometers original mileage. Uh, it has an R for uh, repair because there was repair made on the front hood. There was uh, like a small uh, accident. It hasn't been in like a, a traffic accident, but there was a small accident on the hood which had to be replaced because there's a little bit of rust underneath the body here. So here's some pictures after it arrived from the auction to Japan Partner. So here's a video that uh, Kato from Japan Partner took for me and posted on his website. So you can see a walk around of the car. So once I won the car at auction in Japan, I wanted to get some uh, cooler stuff for it. So uh, there's a bunch of rare parts that they can source for you with Japan Partner over there that they'll help you buy on like Yahoo Auctions Japan, which is like Japanese eBay over there. Most of it's in Japanese, so you may have trouble finding what you're looking for. So what I would do is type in like Sylvia S S14 headlight. or whatever part I was looking for, and then I'd copy the kanji characters and paste them into Yahoo Auctions. And then uh, whatever item I would find, um, I would just send them to Kato, a Japan partner. So like my, my headlights were all dingy. And so he helped me find new headlights. I'd message him the headlight. He's like, okay, let's buy that. So he'd order it for me. Uh, and I went through a ton of different items So like if I go to my balance sheet here, this is all the different amounts that I wire transferred Japan Partner for the car. And then these are all the items. So I ordered floor mats, seats, window trim, teen coilover suspension, rear seats, steering wheel, headlights, basically all the parts I needed, a front bumper, air filter. 
So he sourced all the items for me. And uh, shipping's pretty inexpensive, so like this part that I bought was 5,000 yen for floor mats. Uh, that's about $48 US plus tax to the auction. Uh, delivery fee was free and like $20 commission to Japan partner for doing the work of getting the part per item. Same thing like the teens coilover suspension, buy the item, sales tax, auction fee, delivery fee, his commission. So you got a full, really clean used teen type HA coilover suspension for roughly $400 US. And they installed all these parts on the car for me for no charge, which was fantastic. So if you go to like my Instagram account, you can see like the headlights are real dingy in the front. So they helped source me some new good headlights. Um, I also sourced a Dolux front bumper because I like the look of that far better than the stock bumper and it'll look really good with the stock side skirts that are similar to these. The stock interior was really ugly. So I went ahead and swapped out the factory seats because they're really ugly. Went with them some Sylvia S15 Spec R seats. So these are nice blue Alcantara. Um, look, look pretty good inside the car. Ordered a Sylvia S15 steering wheel. Looks like it's basically brand new condition. Paid pretty good money for that. Uh, stock rear seats. Swap those for these which will match the, the front. They're a little darker plus like the blue will kind of match the blue Alcantara. Replace the factory carpet floor mats. Uh, like I said, I had to replace the hood because the stock hood had a little bit of uh, a dent here. That's why they put a carbon fiber wrap over the, the stock hood that was on the car. And there was too much damage and rust to where they thought it would just be cheaper to replace the hood. So I got a new a used hood for like 50 bucks and then had it repainted. Uh, teen Type HA coilovers. I had these on my WRX here in the US and I really like these. They have the comfort spring so it kind of soaks, soaks up the uh, bumps in the road and really good handling smooth soft suspension. Uh, ordered some Volk CE28s put them on the car seats are in the car and replace the old intake filter so my build is pretty much done so I'm pretty freaking excited for this. Uh, my car is going to be shipping uh, probably in the next two weeks. So I should have it, I would think, beginning of March. Uh, the only issue I was having last night is with uh, the front bumper. They've got, they've got a minimum requirement of 15 centimeters, to, or no, 15, what is it? It's not centimeters, is it centimeters? I don't know. I don't. I can't remember the ex exact measurements, but it had to be 5.9 u inch, 5.9 inches, uh, which is like 15 centimeters, I think, in Japan, in order for it to have clearance to get on the ship. And when they put the bumper on, it's like four inches off the ground. So they're actually Kato is is hooking me up. He's got a customer down in Portland, Oregon, where I live, who has uh, a 40 foot shipping container coming at the end of this month with four cars and like a bunch of different engines and transmissions. This, this guy imports all kinds of stuff and resells it here in the US. So that guy's gonna uh, let Kato stick my bumper in his container and he's gonna just charge me like a little bit of a service fee, maybe like a hundred or 200 bucks. So I have to drive down and pick the bumper up from him. Uh, but the stock bumper is gonna be on the car when it ships. So it's kind of cool. I'll end up getting two bumpers out of the extra work. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm so excited. Let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite car to import? Do you think the one that I imported was the best value? Would you have gone with that or would you have gone with something different? Uh, I think this will be a good investment when the car gets here. There's really no Sylvia S14s for sale that I see anywhere in the States. Um, there's S13s. So I think the value uh, with what I have invested, I think I'll have like $5,000 in positive equity. So I think it'll be a good investment. I can drive it for a while, sell it, and then... Uh, 
start saving money so I can get my R34. That's my goal. So, so when I was bidding on Sylvia's, I actually found a couple different ones that I bid on and I lost the first couple of auctions. So you really kind of have to do your research with looking at the market price of what you think it will bid for because if you really get your heart set on a car, like I lost a bid by 150 bucks for this uh, silver Sylvia S15, which, which is the exact color as my uh, Skyline in the garage. So I thought it would have been kind of cool to have matching paint codes. It was the same exact paint code and everything. Car was completely stock, but I got outbid by like 150 bucks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this was just kind of a quick overview for what kind of cars I was looking at. I know some of you guys have commented and asked me to do a video as far as like how to buy a car and kind of how the entire process goes. So I'll go more in depth with that as far as what type of uh, export documentation you have to have as far as like how you hire a customs agent, how you get the car cleared through US Customs and how you basically do the whole process from start to finish. That's gonna be a lot of information so that video will probably take like 20 minutes just to do in itself. So, but anyway guys, I hope you liked the video. Go ahead and comment down below, which car did you like the best? Do you think I imported the right one? Um, I think this is going to be a fun car. I think it's going to be a good platform. It's got the right look as far as style, what I'm looking for, interior, exterior. And uh, there's not a lot of these around, so I think it's going to be somewhat original. Even though we had the S14 chassis here in the States, we never had the Silvia. We never had the Turbo. I think it's going to be a badass little platform. And uh, I think investment-wise, I think the car's going to be worth quite a bit of money. Uh, more than what I'm, what I'm investing into it. I think I'll have about five to $6,000 in positive equity. So if I want to drive the car for a little while, create some content with it, and then eventually sell it, because uh, I'll probably want to do something else. I'm going to try to save all my money for an R34. So I may drive whatever car I import for like four to six months, and then put that cash into something else and import another car. So eventually I can sell my R32 and whatever car I have to get fifty to sixty thousand dollars to buy an R34. So that's my plan. If you guys like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share. I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers. So if you guys can help me grow the channel, I would appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.